This is a very rudimentary tutorial on JT65. The program that I'm using is JT65-HF, copyright 2008 uh, by W6CQZ. There are newer versions, I'm sure. It's not really important that uh, this be a current version for the tutorial. It'll give a general idea. Uh, after you've seen this tutorial, you're free to download whatever version you wish, and there will be uh, enough commonality between uh, what you'll see here and uh, the version that you'll download that you'll be able to operate it just fine. The screen is laid out with several different areas. You have a waterfall area up here. The colors and intensities are all uh, changeable with these controls here. They show in real time the audio frequencies that are being received by the decoder. Low frequencies to the left, higher frequencies to the right. Each vertical band of frequencies are one QSO underway. You have a station time over here. It's important that you be set to proper time, NIST or time.gov, something. Because part of how JT65 or any of the JT modes work, it's very time synchronized. Everything begins at the top of the minute. Every transmission takes approximately 48 seconds to complete. The decoder has the remaining 12 seconds to decode, and then the next cycle begins at the top of the minute again. Over here are two buttons called transmit even, transmit odd. That means the even or odd minute. Convention says if you are initiating the call, you'd begin on the even minute. The response would come back on the odd minute. So if I'm making a CQ, I'd want to have the even clicked, and that means I'll be transmitting on even minutes. And if I'm responding to someone else's CQ, I'd have the odd set. Now this software, and as I click on either initiating or responding, it'll change that for me. But as I have found, there are a number of people who are using either older software or they're manually operating this, and they'll begin a QSO on the odd minute. So you need to have some control over this so that you'll be able to respond on the even minute if you have to. Upper left-hand corner is uh, a small audio level set. It's actually very important. The decoder is very sensitive as to the basic audio level that it's receiving. Myth has it that the louder the signal is, the more easy it is for a decoder to uh, hear, quote, the audio and, uh, and decode it. In fact, uh, quite the opposite is true. The decoder is very easily overloaded with uh, noise. Regardless of the signal level, the noise level needs to be very low. These two sliders here are typically set so that the audio input is approximately 0 dB. Don't be concerned if you don't see a great deal on the waterfall. You can change how sensitive it is and how well it presents the audio it does here with the control sliders, but JT65 is such a robust decoder that it is not uncommon to have a QSO that you can carry on with someone when you don't see anything on the waterfall at all. There have been a number of times that I've called CQ, sat back, Heard nothing but the quiet hiss coming out of my receiver, but at the end of the next minute, boom, there's a response to my call. All the buttons on the lower right are the various controls to decide what text is being transmitted. The TX generated button here is the automatic. Uh, this, this window will be filled in automatically for you, depending on, on what you've done in the QSO window. We'll get to that in a second. If I want to transmit something specific, something that is not boilerplate, I can click the upper button and type in any text I want. Up to 13 characters. The transmit cycle is only good for transmitting 13 characters. Spaces count, but if I press the call CQ button, it'll fill my call, my grid square into the text window, or uh, if I click the send report, the uh, dB below noise level uh, value will be sent. Across the top of the waterfall is where I would decide what frequency am I generating signals on. This particular unit has a multiple decoder. It can decode more than one signal at the same time. Some of the older versions can only do one signal at a time, and you have to decide which vertical group on the waterfall you're trying to decode. Likewise, when I transmit, this is the position in audio. This is the particular frequency that I will be using to transmit. There is the capability of doing split 
transmitting on one frequency, listening on the other. Uh, we won't go into that right now. Let's take a typical cycle. Here's a cycle that began at 20 hours, 12 minutes, 0 seconds. It's now 20 hours, 12 minutes, 57 seconds. The transmissions have stopped. The decoders have, have decoded what they can. And here are five responses from that waterfall. Uh, we have somebody who's responding to somebody else with their 73. In fact, there are two of them. One that's just beginning a QSO. One that appears to be perhaps an, an error. There's an extra character that doesn't belong. But there's basically five, five stations talking to each other right there. I won't go into the data here, um, DMDT, DF, all that information is findable on the web if you want to do some further checking, but this is a rudimentary tutorial. Here another minute has gone by, it's an even minute, the transmission began at 20 hours 14 minutes 0 seconds, here it is beyond the 48 seconds, it's almost to the odd minute, the decoders have kicked in. Here are four signals, a Roger, a signal, a 73, and one CQ. Now the JT65 software will highlight any line that is a CQ line. And in fact it starts off, um, I believe it's black text on green. I've already clicked on it. I just did a double click on that line and it's already filled in the generated text with his call, my call, my grid square. I have pressed the button at the top of the screen here to enable the transmit. It's also set me to be an odd transmission cycle because I'm responding to him. So at 20 hours 15 minutes I'll begin transmitting this reply. The enabled TX is grayed out. I've already pressed it. The transmit is enabled. The only thing I can do is to press the HALT TX button if I wish. If I press HALT this will continue to decode but it will not transmit anything. Well, I have already enabled it, and the next cycle at 20 hours, 15 minutes, 0 seconds, I'll begin transmitting my reply to him. Now, here it is approaching the odd minute. It's 20 hours, 16 minutes, 0 seconds. At the end of that cycle, I've now received a reply back from, from him. He's given me a signal report of 7. That's 7 dB below noise figure. In the meantime, I have clicked the Send Report button, and it has filled in my noise figure that was automatically calculated in this transmit window. And at 20 hours, 17 minutes, 0 seconds, I will transmit that string. Now here we are at the end of the 18-minute even cycle. I've received a reply back from him, a Roger, 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 which means he pressed this button over here on his end. I've already prepared by pressing the uh, button called send 73 and that's my transmit window so at 20 hours 19 minutes 0 seconds I'll transmit my 73 now here we are I have enabled my transmit I have clicked the transmit even button which means at the next even minute I'll begin transmitting I've pressed the call CQ button which is filled in the text window notice in the meantime at the last decode at the end of the 24 minute cycle, I have another CQ from somebody and because I have not clicked on it, I have not used it, it remains black text. So at 20 hours, 24 minutes, 0 seconds, I'll transmit a CQ, my call and my grid square. Here we are at the end of the 25 minute odd cycle. I've received a response back from a K4NYI. I have already pressed my send report button, so I'm prepared to send you know, my report back to him at the next even minute cycle. There are so many variables about the program that we won't go into here, but once you use this a couple of times, it's very intuitive. It'll become very simple to use, and you'll be able to move to a different JT package if you wish, um, an older version, a newer version, and they'll all operate in the same basic way. You just have to get used to where are the buttons and you know the exact syntax, but I call CQ with my grid locator on an even minute. You respond with your grid locator on the odd minute. I respond with your signal report on the next even minute. You respond with your signal report on the next odd minute. I send a roger, roger, roger on the next even minute. Theoretically, the most proper response would be you would send a, a roger, roger as well. Then on the next even minute, I send a 73. On the next odd minute, you send a 73.